Hello and welcome back to um, my Archicad classes. Um, so today we're going to be looking at um, doors and windows um, and sort of placing them and, um, and the settings and that sort of carry on. Um, actually as a, and as a subset of that also the opening tool. Um, Alright so let's have a look at the, um, the window tool. So again just like um, we saw uh, in previous tutorials um, all of the settings for the window tool appear across this bar at the top. Um, and the really is, uh, there's, there's two different ways of, or three different ways of um, drawing it. This is um, in the center um, on one corner or the opposite corner. So let's just have a look at the centered view. So I want to stick a window um, into the middle of this wall. Now um, where is the center of this wall though? That's an interesting question. So at the moment I have this set to half, right? And you can see that the halfway point is here, which is a bit strange because you'd think if this is um, 8 meters, shouldn't it be snapping to about there? Shouldn't that be the halfway point? So what is going on? Well, that would be because under here we have um, the option is set to between intersection points. And so it's actually looking at where these walls intersect, um, which is going to push the halfway point slightly this way. If we said the entire element though, so that would be from here to here, you'll notice that the halfway point ends up where we expected it to, right on the 4 metre um, line there. So just keep that in mind um, when you're actually wanting to, um, to use this up here is where is it going to snap to. Um, another little thing that you should be um, kind of wary of as well, if something was crossing over this, so if we just had a line for example, um, when it's set to across the element you notice it has no effect, but if this was set to the um, to be between intersection points, that's going to push um, our halfway point in the opposite direction. You watch, see if I can move this even up here. Now my halfway point is here. Okay, so that's halfway between this point and here. All right. So let's go, and we're just going to change that back to and along the entire element, um, and we're going to get the window tool here. Um, I'm going to click and put it at their halfway point. Now I've done a single click and this pops up. Okay. Now there's actually also this little sun symbol which is also very important to us. So the way that I've drawn this wall, right, um, I've drawn it so f um, according to the inside dimension. This would be very common if you had measured up a, a house from the inside and you're placing the walls on the outside. So if you're doing renovation work for example. Um, and you'll actually notice that by default, the sun, okay, so this little sun icon, which is um, indicating the outside of the window, um, is appearing on the inside. So how do we change that? Because it doesn't matter where I move my mouse, it's always on this side. Now, you might be thinking, oh, well, that's because yeah, I have to have the reference line on the outside of the wall, which is true. However, if I just press tab, bam, this outside of the window is now on the other side. Now how did I know to do that? Well actually if you look down in the bottom left corner here, this has been here the whole time and it actually gives um, a, sort of a help if you like on how to use the tool that you have currently selected. So at the moment because I'm in the middle of drawing a window or placing a window I should say, um, it's telling me click to choose the opening angle. Um, so in this case, now this um, is all helpful, but also notice here it says press tab to change reveal side. Okay, so the reveal side is um, the outside of the window, which is what that sun indicates. Now when I'm placing this window, um, it wants me to indicate the opening um, direction. Okay, now it's going to ask you this regardless, you might be placing a window that doesn't have an opening direction. Um, it might be a fixed window, so why would this matter? Um, and you're right, but it doesn't really matter. Um, however, if you were going to swap this out um, with another type of window that did open, which way would you like it to open? Um, and so it might be, okay, well this is an external thing, there's a garden out here, so there's no problem with um, the window opening outwards. Um, and so I'm still going to define it. So it's a good idea just to think about it, um, because it would be a real pain if you've got to go around changing all this. If, you, if your client decided, actually, I want all those windows to open, then you have to go around and, and set all the opening directions. Okay, um, so that was on the centered one. This one here um, is very handy if you are trying to place a window. Oops, sorry, hang on, I'm just undoing that. Um, 
if we are trying to place this window um, from this corner. Okay, so notice um, it is it is sensitive to where you are clicking. Okay, so so notice how it's it's appearing um, on one side. It used to actually I thought it used to have only one mode for this. But anyway, um, if I go and change it to this mode, then aha, it's appearing on this side. So if I want this window to um, attach to this wall at this point, which can be a little bit difficult. Um, that's how I do it. Okay, so now I know that this window is going to come all the way up and it's going to touch that 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 um, that wall there. Okay, again, it still wants to know which is the um, the outside. Okay, you'll actually notice that this is automatically um, switched to the other side because of the side of the wall that I clicked on. Okay, if I'd done it from this side, which would be a little bit tricky, but not impossible, um, you'll notice that it defaults to the sun being on that side. So I just hit tab, bam. Okay. Notice I have got a problem here because um, we've actually got um, a core on the outside here. So this is the cladding um, that is actually appearing. Um, now it will be actually overlapping with our window. So that, that's not cool. So yeah, we want to actually snap it to this side. There we go. Cool. And this window, I'm going to say, opens this way. Okay, so you could open that window internally. Um, otherwise it's going to... Well, it's going to be very difficult to open that window um, outwards. All right. Um, so let's have a little look at that. So if we go into the F3, you can see we've now got two windows. And you can even see um, which direction they open based um, on the little symbology here. Okay, so if I go and select this, you can actually see that little pink dot. In fact, watch this. We can use this to open the window really good idea to open the window just to um, see is it going to collide with something okay so that this window here a little bit trickier because yeah it's going to open internally which I might actually have to go inside to do that sometimes you can do it but yeah it's a little bit difficult oh also notice our, our wall doesn't go all the way to the top that was because when we drew this remember I was showing an example of what you could do in the settings to say that it will be minus 500 from the uh, story above so let's just set that to zero and go OK. Cool, now it goes all the way up. Um, and I was going to open this window. So I can select that, click on that little guy there. And there's our opening angle. You can actually go and type in a, um, oh sorry, I'm not sure what the keyboard shortcut is for that one. But um, So you can go tab, we'll go through all the numbers. If you go shift tab, it goes back up through the list. So I can say I want it open 45 degrees. Bam. Okay, so that was the simple sort of way of putting windows in, but what else can we do? Well, let's have a look. So let's go back to the 2D view and open up the settings for the window tool. Okay, so here's our window tool. Um, you'll notice that, yes, we do have a, a, a bunch of settings on here, but nothing too amazing. Um, we can change the dimensions um, of a window. We can change how high it is above um, the floor in this case. Um, so that's a 1,000. Um, and what else can we do in here? We flip the reveal. That's about it. If we go into here, though, oh, oh, hang on, I'm on my favourite still. Sorry, ignore that. We'll come back to that in a second. Um, here you can see all the different types of windows that are built in. Now you'll notice that this is like doors, for example. It looks like there's doors that actually look like windows, but um, I was expecting there to be nothing in there. Um, but these are all your windows, okay? So this isn't your entire library. You'll notice that things like chairs are missing. Um, it is basically showing you windows only. Um, and we've got loads of different options in here, okay? And if this isn't enough for you, um, there's also the CI tools um, have a window builder, a doors and window builder, which is amazingly configurable. Um, now, I don't want to take anything away from this because this is also incredibly configurable. So even this basic simple window that we just saw is not basic and simple. It is in the current state, but we can make it a lot more complex. Um, and there are so many settings in here, it will m basically melt your brain. Um, it is a lot like shopping, so by all means you can go around here and try and find something that kind of suits your needs. Um, but you'll probably find actually that this default window is so configurable that you'll be able to get pretty much any window you could um, yeah, need. Um, now yes, it is quite a good idea to actually go out and find out what windows are available. 
um, or measure up, if you're trying to recreate something, measure up um, a lot of the um, elements of your of your window that um, that you're trying to replicate, um, or you know, get a, um, a catalog from your builder or your um, hardware store um, for the windows that you're going to be trying to use, and you can re um, recreate it basically. Um, I'm sure that maybe you could even get um, a GDL object from of the window that you'll be using. I have no idea. Um, so let's have a look through here though. So um, first of all, this little guy here just allows you to go sort of quickly between each of the little menus rather than going in here. So you can just actually work your way through it. Um, so let's have a look at um, the sash type. So this is pretty cool because we can do like all sorts of crazy ones. There's like a vent one. Um, now there's actually a little warning here. Um, these f first three, okay, so that's the pl what it will look like in plan view. So you can change the pen colors and things like that in there somewhere. Um, there's also got, um, this is what it will look like if it was an elevation. And over here is what it will look like in the 3D window. This one, however, is pre-rendered. Okay, and this, um, this preview window um, is a little bit, um, yeah, miss, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, misleading. So you notice here we've got a vent sash and it's not showing up here. So um, I like to, you know, most of the time looking at the 3D window, um, you can rotate, uh, or we can flip this in here. Um, that's about it really. I thought you could change the view, but maybe not. No, okay. Um, so right, so over here we can see we've got um, all sorts of different settings that we can change around. It's got some different um, settings just for the louvers themselves. Um, but we've got loads of other options in here as well. So we can go to the horizontal and vertical grid. Um, and here we can actually say how many um, panes we want. So if we want to make, you know, let's say two by two, cool. Yeah, you know, we've got yeah, kind of a, a storybook styled window. Um, and if we keep moving through here, you'll actually see there's a whole bunch of stuff. Um, oh, we can do divided. Okay, so we've got, you know, an up and down portion. Um, and again, we can yeah, go two by two. Cool. And you'll actually notice that with, I think it's this one. Is there any other options? Oh, we've got window handles. Um, so we can add a, a window handle to it. Okay, you can see the opening angle. So it should apply a, a handle on there somewhere. Oh, there it is. Okay, so there's the, the, the handle. Um, we've got uh, ventilation systems. So you can actually turn that on and it'll actually have like a little frame over the window or over the glazing all sorts of stuff highly highly configurable um, what oh, actually there's a really nice one in here so if we're trying to do uh, top hung okay so now we'll slide up and down um, actually this one's pretty cool double sash okay so even though that window looks very simple as you can see um, we can configure all sorts of different options Where's the hanging, where are we, reversible, reversible, horizontal, top hung. No, that's not what I was looking for. I thought there's one where it actually splits it into two. Double hung? Yeah, this one. Okay. Um, and you've even got like the option to, um, I think you can even split that one up into multiple pieces as well. But anyway, as you can see, we've got loads of different options. Now. As I didn't have anything selected, nothing has changed, what I've actually done is set the default. So now, when I go and add a window, which is the opening angle, again, doesn't really make much sense this because it's going to actually open, sorry, um, F3. Um, it's actually going to be opening straight up and down. Okay, and it's also got a rather peculiar looking handle on here. So in this case, you might not want a handle. Oh, that was interesting. It didn't actually open the window, did it? Ah, and it's got... Uh, there you go, that one worked. you got to make sure that you're actually grabbing the right piece, otherwise you move the window up and down. Okay, so, yep, we've got a interesting looking window. I'm just going to take those handles off because they're kind of bugging me. They look terrible. Uh, so let's go to the handle. I don't know what this one is. Doesn't look like anything. Let's just turn the handle off in this case. Okay. Awesome. Okay, so we've got um, some really awesome windows. 
Now, if you've made your really awesome window, you may want to save it, um, which is a really good idea because if I delete this window, um, I've lost it pretty much forever, although it's my default at the moment. However, um, let's just show you how to save these. So, if I go and open up this window, so I'm going to select that window, and I'm going to go to the settings, and I'm going to go up to this little star. Cool, and here's all my favorites. I haven't got any at the moment. Um, and I'm going to add a new favorite and call this uh, Window 1. All right. And so now, um, now yes, I could suck the settings out of here by using the eyedropper, so that's holding down the Alt key. Um, I can suck the settings out, and then I can go Alt Option or Alt Control on the PC and inject the settings into this window. And I will now have, actually, let's, um, let's, let's just do something here. Let's go and draw a little mark here around this area. Okay, in fact, I'm even going to cut straight through this window just to show how awesome the marquee tool can be. And then I'm going to go function F4 or F5 on the PC. And you can see here now that it's just drawing um, what I see inside that marquee, including a cross section through my window. Pretty cool, eh? You can actually see that these are actually like double glazed. I've got like a, a pane of glass on the inside and the outside. So don't know what would happen when we do a render. We might get a double refraction or, or more. Um, and you might see that uh, leaky building syndrome is going to happen here. Um, so maybe we need to um, modify it. Okay, so let's select this window. I'm going to go and um, just get rid of that favorite setting. I'm going to go into here. And we're going to go into the basic window settings. So here's all the settings. And we can go through. What else have we got here? Um, I think. I don't think it's going to reveal. No. So this is where these little forward arrows are quite good closure type but all sorts of different things for the um, for how it, uh, it basically inserts in the wall um, we can put a masonry arch above it if it's um, a brick wall um, which actually looks pretty cool we'll put that on just just so you guys can see cool um, in fact I think there's even an option to have a um, different you see it's got like a little angle on it and you can even have like an arch somehow. I can't even remember how to do it now. Yeah, that's quite cool. Um, so many options. And here we go. Here's a sill. Okay, so we can have a timber sill. I want to have a solid sill. Okay. And I'm going to go OK and you actually see. Cool, so there's our, our brick. Um... And there is our cell, okay? So we shouldn't leak anymore. And remember, if I want to pull those settings out and inject them into there, I can get Option, Option Command, or Option Control, and bam, inject those settings into the other window, and now those um, are up to date. Um, if I wanted to, hang on, because if i got a favorite, right, but the favorite doesn't have the cell in it. Cool, well, I can just go into here, and go Redefine, and, oops, hang on. Cancel. Uh, it's not going to let me, is it? Here we go. Redefine favorite. Bam. Now it's got the brick and the sill. Okay. So you can update those, which is very handy. All right. Um, now there is also the empty opening. So let's just go up the story, up to this story up here. Okay. Um, so. Um, we're now on the um, on the first floor, um, and we're going to put an opening in there. Now you'll actually notice there is an opening tool, okay? And the opening tool uses different symbology. Um, it's relatively new, actually. Um, we've also got different ways of um, of placing that, um, and it's got a few little options on how that hole's going to be drilled, especially if it's on an angle. Okay, so at the moment it's just going to be going straight through, but we could set that at a different angle, and we could also make a round hole. Okay, so I'm just going to go through to the 3D view, and you can see there it's got a square hole. And as per usual, I can select this, and I can change it to a round hole. I can even change some attributes, um, like for example the height. So I can move this, um, oops, I'm sorry, the height. No, which one's the height? Oh, I can change the height over here anyway. Okay, so 1000. 
Okay, and it's going to move all the way down. Oops, that's 100. No, 1,000. And I can also grab this point here and make it taller, wider. Um, you'll notice actually up here, if I go and lock these numbers, it will keep it nice and round. Why didn't that let me go up? Oh, now it's letting me go up. There we go. Okay, so that's the whole tool. Um, now, actually, if you want to do other shaped holes, you'll actually notice that in the window tool, um, and you might have actually seen it as I was going through here, there's also empty openings. Okay, so this actually used to be how you used to do it. You just hit that empty opening, um, and they've recently added this tool here, the, the, the opening um, tool. Um, but here we've got a whole bunch of different shapes as well. So if you want to make hexagonal ones, that's how you do it. Okay, and we can go and pop a hexagonal hole in there. Okay, so holes um, a, are um, windows as well, and they can be doors. So if we actually go into the door tool, um, you'll actually notice, if we get out of the favourites again, um, you'll actually see that we've got here um, empty door openings. Okay, so this is how you can make like a little archway. We also have um, a button down there, just does an empty opening like that, simple door opening, um, and you can place that. Probably not a good idea on this floor because people will fall to their death. All right, so um, I think I'm going to leave it there. Um, I think I've covered everything I need to cover. Um, let's just um, have a quick look here. We've got the um, the door tool, the window, and the opening tool. Um, within those, remember, we've got loads of settings. It is just like shopping. Um, okay, I just had the empty opening open, um, so you just have to go back to this link to library. Here we go. So it just collapses on itself. Um, and then we can get back into here. So there's loads of stuff in here. There's loads of metadata that can be added. Okay, so here we've got all of the metadata that can be attached to um, the item. We've also got um, great for quantity surveyors. Um, we've also got all of the 2D options as well. So that's all of the, the pins um, it's going to use and fills. Um, how it's going to you know be cut. So we can actually. Um, have different um, ways of viewing that in the floor plan. Um, I'm not going to go into lots of these details because you can always just open up the manual and have a look. Um, really the idea of a lot of my tutorials is to set you off in the right direction um, and give you a few tips and tricks along the way. Um, so if you like it, um, please hit the little like at the bottom of the screen there. Um, if you want to see more, obviously you know, hit subscribe and notifications and all that other carry on that YouTubers always go on about. Anyway, um, I'll see you in the next class. Um, I think I might actually start talking a little bit about the um, element attributes um, and how they all kind of work because we've been kind of working with a lot of the, the defaults um, and it would probably be a good idea to see how all of our building materials and composites um, and anything else in there? Uh, materials, our uh, surfaces, um, how these all work together. So I think that will be my next lesson. All right, till then, goodbye.